Hey, what's up? My name is Chris Cornthwaite. I founded the blog roostervane.com. And today I want to talk about how to make money blogging. Okay, so here we go. How do you actually make money blogging? Now, I want to say from the outset, I want to be really honest with you that I find there are so many people who are telling you to make money blogging. I mean, I'm just another one, I guess. But I want to actually be honest. It's actually hard to make money blogging. And I think there are a lot of kind of gurus. We definitely live in an age of fake gurus. I don't know if there was an ad. Maybe there's even one before you watch this video of a guy like standing in front of a jet or something. And honestly, making money online is still very possible. It's obviously there are huge marketplaces online. The challenge is, is that everybody's trying to do a lot of the same things. And I think that more than ever, if you want to make money online, you need to be creative. And often the things that people are selling that have worked in the past might not work for you because everybody's trying to do the same thing. So I want to give you seven ways that you can make money off a blog in 2021. But I want to just add a disclaimer. All of these take a lot of work. None of them are easy and all of them require you learning how to build blog traffic. So your job is learning how to grow traffic and then how to monetize that traffic. That's another video for another day. But without further ado, let's go. Here are seven ways that you can make money online. OK, so first of all, and I think still one of the easiest to access is to sell consulting or coaching. Now, this can be a little tricky, but if you are a coach or a consultant, you have an area of expertise. The really nice thing about this, first of all, you're actually selling something people need. People are looking for consultants and coaches. And basically, in this case, your blog is showing that you are the expert, that you are the person that they need to talk to about whatever thing is that you write about. And as you know, it probably could be anything from like careers to how to braid your hair. There are a million different consultants out there and you could be one of them. One of the great things about consulting or coaching is that you don't actually need enormous traffic, which you actually really do for some of the other things I'm going to talk about. About. So consulting or coaching, the pros, really easy to get into. You don't need a huge audience. But one of the cons about consulting or coaching is that it's not scalable. You're basically trading your time for money. If you do one hour of coaching, that's an hour less that you have to work on other things. So number two, you can sell a book. And this is something I've done. I'll link to my book below. I, uh, I wrote a book and I put it on Amazon and I do make money off it every month. The trick is it's not actually enough money to live off of. So even though I've sold probably a couple thousand copies of my book already, it's not creating. I mean, it's not it's not exactly going to be enough to retire on anytime soon. So, I mean, there are exceptions to this. If you write a book and it goes viral, if it's a New York Times bestseller, you're going to be set for a very long time with the money you make on that. But it's all about the numbers. So if you're creating a blog and selling an ebook from your blog, chances are you need to have a lot of traffic to actually make enough to live off of. However, it's still a nice little boost. And actually the money that I get from my book every month, probably I'd, I'd have to do the math, but it probably about covers the costs of actually having my blog up and uh, maybe some of my marketing costs too. So it can actually be a really great way to bring in kind of a trickle of income online. Two great things about writing a book. First of all, once you do it, it's there. You never have to think about it again. You can just leave it. If you want to update it, you can, but you don't have to. The second thing is, is it gets your name out there. It gets your voice out there. It's a pretty accessible way, especially if you do like sales, low cost ways for people to pick it up and read it. It's an accessible way for people to hear what you have to say and therefore to actually kind of have a bigger impact on your own kind of reputation, on your credibility. The negative thing about selling a book, I already said, I mean, you have to have the traffic to actually make a living off it. So it's probably realistic in the first year or two to expect the book to be more like people's introduction to you. And maybe you'll make a little bit of money off it. That's great. But uh, I wouldn't hang your hat on making your whole living off of a book at first. Prove me wrong. Please do. But it is a challenge. OK, so number three, I want to talk about affiliate or influencer marketing. So this used to be just affiliate marketing and the way it worked and still works is that you put a link on your website to a product that you believe in. When somebody clicks on it, you get a small commission or maybe a big commission, depending on what the product is. And that's a way that you can actually make money off your traffic. So I actually do this, for example, with Bluehost on Roostervane. Bluehost is a really well recognized affiliate. So if you click through a link on Roostervane and you sign up for Bluehost web hosting, which I do use and I really love, um, you will actually 
be giving me a commission as the creator of Roosterbane. So that's kind of the old model of affiliate marketing. It's still pretty common. The other thing that's becoming more and more common though is influencer marketing. So this is where, I mean, not a big surprise, but you have, you know, a huge audience on social media, maybe on Instagram or something, and a company will actually pay you to market their product. And companies are actually kind of intentionally starting to create influencer marketing campaigns. It's not going anywhere. So if you can create a big following either on your blog or on one of your other social media streams, you can maybe actually create some good money off it. Okay, so those two things, affiliate and influencer marketing, I'm kind of lumping together. The benefit of both of these is neither one really takes a lot of time, especially with affiliate marketing. I mean, you can really just put a link on your website. It lives there as traffic comes, people will click on it. And if you have enough traffic, you can actually create a full-time income off of this. There's one famous blogger who makes 50 grand a month just by doing affiliate marketing. So there's a lot of kind of things you can do with affiliate marketing. There are two kind of downsides to affiliate marketing or even influencer marketing. First of all, it's about your brand. So you don't just want to be kind of pushing out everything that you can make money off of. You actually want to choose things that you believe in, that you actually know are going to help your audience. And if you just push out everything, you're going to lose credibility. So you do have to be kind of selective in what you choose. And the other thing is back to traffic or even followers, you actually need to have the audience to justify it. So that's affiliate marketing or influencer marketing. Okay, so number four, you can look at advertising. Advertising is still a way that you can make money online. I would say it's like maybe less popular, especially if you're thinking about the traditional like banner ads that we used to see on websites. Those of you who remember the earlier days of the internet, those are becoming less popular, but they're still around. To get started with advertising, if you're a blogger, you actually need to have about 50,000 views on general. I mean, there are different ad networks that require less, but generally speaking, if you actually want to make any money off of it, you need to have like 50,000 views and up per month. So it takes time to generate that traffic, but if you can get there, you can definitely use ads. So the cons with monetizing through ads is you actually have to have a lot of traffic. I mean, it might take you years to generate the type of traffic, like hundreds of thousands of viewers a month or even millions to actually make a really good income off of advertising. But the great thing about ads, just kind of like affiliate links, is that you don't have to do a lot with them. You kind of create them and leave them there, and then you can focus on building your traffic, you're not spending any time on them, and you're actually just making money on the traffic that you already have. So advertising can still be a great way, even in 2021, or also advertising on socials, if you're not advertising on your blog, can be a great way to make some money off your blog. Okay, so number five, the fifth way to make money off your blog, you can sell a course. I've done this on Rooster Vein. I've actually built courses on my website. There are different ways to do it. So I've done this on Rooster Vein using a plugin that I call LearnDash that I really like and helped me to create a course. Um, you can also use like a third party site. So there are a ton of these, but you might look at anything from like Kajabi to Mighty Networks. And there are even platforms that you can create courses on as a blogger. So this might be something like Udemy. So there are a million different options for creating courses online. If I've learned anything from doing it, it's that the competition is actually really tight. There are a lot of people selling courses. I mean, you'll hear stories, you know, from 10 years ago when bloggers would put out a course and make $100,000 in a weekend. And apparently that does still happen sometimes. But again, you need to have huge amounts of traffic to actually do that. You need to have a really big email list maybe. So you actually have to build the audience to make a lot of money off courses. But if people know you and trust you, even though there's a lot of noise or a lot of courses out there, if people know and trust you and want to learn from you, you might find that you can still sell courses. And that's what we've done at Rooster Vane. I mean, we have something kind of unique to offer. I'll link to some of our courses below if you want to check them out. But we have something unique to offer. We have a voice in a space um, helping students build careers that there's not actually a ton of courses in this space yet. And also we just really love what we do. We love to help people. So you can actually build a course if you have the right niche, you can build a course and you can still make money off it even in 2021. It's actually really low, really low. I mean, it takes a lot of work to get it up and to create it a lot of work more than I ever realized. But once you do that, it kind of just lives on your site. There's not a whole lot of work you have to do. You might need to do a little bit of like tech support or you can hire somebody to do that. But once you've created that course, it's going to keep making you money for months and years to come. That's really great. Okay, so number six, you can start a community. So you can actually create a community of people. You can charge membership, especially if you're gathered around a common interest or a common kind of um, place to share stories or ideas, or maybe you're all trying to learn something together. So community is really great. They say that people join a community for the information and they stay because of the community itself. So basically, 
people will often join a community to learn more about, I don't know, scrapbooking, but they stay because they meet people they love and they want to talk to all the time. And I found this to be true as well with our community on Rooster Veins. So it is something that takes a lot of work, takes work to grow a community, takes work to keep people engaged and to keep them going. But if you can do that work and connect it to your blog somehow, it can be a way to actually make a full-time living off of a blog if you can get enough members. Okay, so number seven, you can actually do paid promotion. So I talked a little bit about this with influencer marketing. It's not totally different, but you can do things like guest posts on a blog that people pay for. It's becoming less common to do this, to be honest. There are different reasons. One of the biggest ones is because um, too many guest posts or too many paid posts can actually hurt your SEO. But still, it's still a thing. So if you have the audience, you're going to find that people start to approach you asking if they can use your blog. Basically, if they can create something, put it on your blog and pay you to do it. You can decide if this works for you or not basically, but you can actually make some money off that too. So paid promotion is still a thing, still a way that you can make money off your blog. Okay, so those are seven ways that you can make money blogging. Have you done it? Have you tried it? Actually, it can take a lot of work, but is there anything sweeter than making money online? I don't know. I mean, that's the dream, right? Total flexibility, total freedom. Give it a shot. Let me know how it works out. Comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. Do share this post with somebody who needs to hear it. If you know somebody, don't forget to subscribe. Got lots more content coming your way very soon. Check out the main blog, roostervane.com, and I'll see you soon.